Corey Bargman is one of our top scientists, and she's also tops at explaining her science. In the conversation we had on Clear and Vivid, we weren't able to include the story I'm going to play for you now because of time. But it's really interesting. It's how in the earliest part of her career, she did research on genes and cancer that led, because of work by others, to really important breakthroughs in breast cancer. Really interesting. Take a listen. As a graduate student, I was in Bob Weinberg's lab at MIT, and I was studying the genetics of cancer. And this was an amazing time in biology where the field was for the first time understanding deeply that cancer was a genetic disease and that certain kinds of changes were occurring in cancers and exactly what those changes are. So again, there's a big question. Cancer arises from changes in the genetic material of some of the cells in your body. That's a big conclusion. But then there is a grain of sand level that you study things as a scientist. Exactly which gene has changed? Exactly where? What was that change? Why is that cell now dividing when it's not supposed to be dividing? And as a graduate student, I studied kind of a funny cancer. It was a rat neuroblastoma. And I helped to identify exactly what the genetic change was in that rat neuroblastoma that made it grow and cause a cancer in a rat. Now, there's kind of a sarcastic thing that people say sometimes about science, which is, well, that's good news for sick rats. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but again, the understanding of cancer in a rodent helped us to understand cancers in humans. So I emerged at the end of this with a gene and a mutation. And I said, this particular protein, it is responsible for the cancer cell growing. And it was of interest because, again, science, we don't do science alone. We do science in communities. Different people are experts in different areas, and we build on each other's work. So we were working in the Weinberg lab with an immunologist because we were particularly interested in this rat cancer because the animal's own immune system could sometimes cure the cancer, could actually fight it off. And that was quite unusual, and it seemed like a really interesting avenue. And after we found the gene, we understood why that was true, because the protein was unusual. It sat on the surface of the cancer cell, so the immune system could recognize it. It was sitting exposed to the outside world. And so we now understood why the immune system could fight that cancer and not other cancers where the proteins that had changed in the cancer were inside the cell, protected from the immune system. You could, could you see this with a microscope? How did you know it was in that configuration? We could see that because of all of the things that we know about cell biology and different kinds of tools that we can use. We see what the, we see, we see what the protein is. We predict that the protein is partly outside the cell. We then take a cell and use a, antibody to the protein and we show that indeed the antibody can find that protein and it can't find proteins that are entirely within the cell. It's a, it's a, every little step along the way is hard won and then it turns into a single sentence. But I just want to go on with the story because the great thing about this story is that it doesn't stop with the rat cancer. Is it then, then someone named Dennis Slayman who was a clinician um, in California, started to study human cancers. And he said, well, do any human cancers have this same change? And well, it turns out that human neuroblastomas don't have this change. But human breast cancers, some of them do have changes in the exact same human version of the gene that we were studying. And then they showed that once they knew that, that led to the realization that maybe that human form of cancer could also be fought off with antibodies, with the immune system. And so then the story migrates to Genentech, which was one of the very first biotech companies, and they developed human antibodies that could attack the protein on those breast cancer cells just the same way that in neuroblastomas in a rat, antibodies could attack 
the protein on those cancer cells. And this is now um, the, the basis of a drug called Herceptin. It's used to treat, I think, 100,000 women with breast cancer a year. And it's really exciting to feel that I was one small step along the process of developing that treatment. Now, I don't want to exaggerate my contribution. I think there are probably a hundred or many hundreds or a thousand people who had as much to do with that as I did. But it's very rewarding to see that understanding can lead to the ability to act. That understanding something about cancer, understanding something about the human immune system, then leads to treatments for a cancer in a human. And that's what we all hope for in science.